love training in New York City. New York City is my home. It's a pretty wild place. And you're always gonna see some crazy shit go down because I'm all over the place. Show you how crazy life is. This park right here is Forest Park. That's where I sold angel dust in 1978 and got shot and went to prison at the dome here. So, another day in the life. I'm Mon Joseph, author, lead singer of the Cro-Mags, and Iron Man. An Iron Man is 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile marathon. It adds up to 140.6 miles. The thing about when you start doing Iron Man's, it's either gonna be one and done or you're gonna get the Iron Man fucking bug and you're gonna be like, yo, all right, sign up for the next race. And that's what I did. I finished New York and I signed up right away for the next race, which was Cabo. And then I just kept going since. I just did uh, Taiwan April 12th. Then uh, now I'm doing Boulder. There's a lot leading up to preparing yourself for an Ironman. You, it's gonna take a toll on your body. It's gonna take a toll on your mind. So you have to put the groundwork in. First and foremost, you have to put the training in. And I've always been athletic. You know, I boxed in the Navy. I boxed when I was locked up in the 70s. I bike raced, I ran marathons. But in 1981, I saw Ironman Hawaii on Wide World of Sports. You know, I was watching these people just put everything on the line and like, wow, the emotion just, I'm like, I'm gonna do that race one day. As I'm getting ready for these Ironmans, what I do is I'll ride from Manhattan and I'll go out to Lockaway Beach, dump my bike at my buddy's place, put my wetsuit on, and get in the water and do my 2.4 mile swim and refuel, get back on the bike, and hammer back into the city through Brooklyn. So I do one big loop. An opportunity came about, the New York Ironman came in 2012, and uh, I started to work with this coach, Orion Mims, who's done like an insane amount of Ironmans, half Ironmans, and he's like, dude, let me coach you and I can get us in this race, you know, for this charity. And then Aaron was my strength and conditioning coach and helped me work through a lot of injuries that I had with trigger point and different stretching and activation stuff to uh, make sure that I was able to finish. So, and your nutrition is a major part of it too. High nutrient dense foods is very important leading up to this race. I'm eating five, six times a day. You know, you never want the tank to be empty, man. I'm constantly consuming a lot of fruits, veggies, a lot of plant-based proteins. I'm in juice press every day. I'm usually in here right after I hit the gym. 50% of my diet is raw, plant-based. One of my main staples, I do the chia seed pudding, high in omegas, really helps with the training. And I also do the superfood acai. And I do a shake every day too. So I'm gonna have you guys make me the clean green protein that's got kale, spinach, hemp protein, almond butter, coconut milk. So that's more of like a recovery after you train hard. So I came off the bike or come out of the gym. I always had food issues because I was in a really bad foster home for seven years that starved us. So, I mean, I would eat just whatever I could get my hands on. Fucking rotting meat, whatever. It was the worst. And uh, back at the end of 80, I met the Bad Brains. Ended up splitting from the Navy and coming to New York and getting a job with them. And they're the ones that actually got me to, to go plant-based because they were like, you can work with us. But HR, the singer, was like, you can't eat meat. And then I got a job with them, and next thing you knew, I got off the meat, all that shit. I actually started doing raw foods first. I'm gonna make some dinner. So the thing I like about this store 
He gets everything from a lot of local organic produce. And this is like the neighborhood store. I've been shopping in here 20 some odd years. So a lot of the endurance athletes more and more are going plant-based because it helps you recover quicker and meat puts the body in a stressful condition because it's very difficult to, to digest. And we're making a recipe out of my book, Meat is for Pussies. So I'm gonna make you guys meatless chicken burritos. These burritos I make are high protein, very high nutrient dense dinner. So we're gonna get some rice going. We're gonna put the coconut oil in here, which is gonna add a lot of good fat. So mustard seeds will add a lot of good flavor. And hing smells like garlic. And then we do our turmeric. That's really kill them cancer cells, bam. So you know, it takes preparation time to make good food, but it's worth it. Because the motherfuckers that stand there eating fast food are gonna spend many, many weeks and months in the hospitals, seeing doctors, getting online to get their medication. So I'd rather invest the time, make a good meal, homemade, so now look at this rice. First of all, the rice is high in protein. And then second, you got the peas and you got the cashews. And look at, look at the greens on there that we're gonna put into the burritos. We're gonna use the leaves. These have more vitamin C than, than oranges. Look at, look at the colors of our food. I lived in the Hare Krishna temple and I used to cook. My early beginning was cleaning the fucking pots and cleaning the kitchen and working alongside the cook. But actually, Prabhupada, who's pictured right here, this was the person who started the whole vegetarian movement in America. I've served this to people, and they thought they were eating fucking meat. I didn't even tell them how amazing this stuff really is. It's just vegetable protein, man. The philosophy is if you just cook brown rice and beans for people, who the fuck wants to eat that? If you can make some very healthy food that tastes good, people are gonna wanna eat this stuff. So we got our rice, which we prepared earlier. We'll throw a couple of pieces of the veggie chicken. So now you got your protein, you got your carbs. We're gonna put some greens up in that. So there you go. So we got the super protein burrito. So now, we're gonna put it on the plate and we're gonna offer it. This is a picture of Prabhupada, my spiritual teacher, and Radha Govinda, Krishna. So we're almost done here with this. The burritos can come out. Oh, it came out nice, look. See, this is part of the process. You gotta realize where I came from. Abusive homes, on the streets. So when I got into this, this, this saved my life, so I try to follow what the teachings are. Namo Mahamada Naya Krishna Prima Padaya Te Krishna Naya Krishna Chitna Naya Krishna Naya Krishna Naya Krishna Namo Bhamana Dabaya Yipo Bhamana Taya Chaja Gataya Krishna Naya Govinda Naya Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Namaste Saraswati Devi Guru Vani Pachanayi Nivashesha Shunya Vani Vashkata Di Shantara Naya And that's that. It's all about proper consciousness, the way you prepare your food, the way you cook your food, and I try to do things the right way, attention to detail. All right, and since I did all the training today, I'm gonna fucking have the extra veggies. People always say, oh, you do the cro mags to get in shape for Iron Man. I'm like, nah, I do the Iron Man to keep in shape for the cro mags I, I always say I want to be able to perform as I did when I was in my 20s, and I'm still able to do that. I really get my training in. I don't mess around. If I'm on tour, which I was, I was going out and hitting 15, 18 mile runs or trying to find a gym with a stationary bike and ride it with an altitude mask. 
Now you look at most bands, they're trying to live the rock and roll fantasy bullshit life. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That ain't how we're living our lives. This is uh, trigger point therapy. So there's certain trigger points in the body. So before I uh, do any exercise, I do this. So this loosens up my shoulders. I tend to move my arms a lot when I play, so. And I swam today, so it really tightens up. You know, one week out from an Ironman, people wouldn't even book a fucking show like this. Yeah. I booked, I got two shows. So if I don't warm up and do my stuff, then you're asking for injuries, you know? When I was 20 years old, I didn't have to do shit, man. I could just fucking bang my body up, and it, but I'm, I'm not that young, you know? Now, when you get off a 100-mile ride, you fucking hips and whatever, you're feeling it, you know? So you gotta just get off and have the discipline to stretch and, and do trigger point. All right. very important part of my life. It's what, it's what took me out of the darkness of like going back to prison or ending up a dead person or a drug addict. The way I describe the cro is it's, it's just one big explosion of, of positive energy at the shows. The, the audience participation is what fuels the fire. So, you know, we love that kind of stuff. And it may look like it's a violent act, but it's not really. It's just everybody grooving and having a good time. And that's what hardcore punk rock shit was about. Yeah. Wow. How you feel tonight? We feel good. So way back in 2012, we played this festival. And the next day, I went and did my first Iron Man. Well, next Sunday, I'm doing my sixth. You see these So we're here at the hotel in Boulder, near the start, and we're prepping everything for the Boulder Ironman. I have to be in the water at 6.30 a.m., which requires me to get up early and start consuming nutrients. I will do oatmeal with a banana, and then I will have my organic bread with peanut butter on it. So these are Cliff. These are 98% organic and vegan. I will tape these to the top tube. So the minute I get out of the water, I bang down two of these before I get on the bike. These bottles will also have scratch. This is the go-to stuff. This is what guys in the Tour de France climb mountains in 90 degree heat with. This has the salts. And then I also have glucose. This is just liquid glucose. It's just instantly goes into your blood and gives you instant energy. The other thing I'll do on the bike, which is very important, is to try to get down as much of these as I can. So I'll do two cliff bars, and I'll try to get three down, because when you get to the run, it's all gels and water. You, you're not gonna get one of these down. And most of this stuff will be consumed tomorrow. I will burn over 9,000 calories in my race. It's about finishing this race, that's everything. I've put four months of heavy, hardcore fucking training into this. If there's an injury, whatever happens, you, you, you push forward and you get through it. It's 5.15. We're going into the bike transition so I can set my water bottles in. We're at the reservoir. This is the swim start. So you come out of the water, get on your bike. We're gonna pump the tires, 
put out gels on the bike, all the nutrition I need. Good athletes, 612, approximately 12 minutes before we start our first group. We're about to get this show underway! This is a mindset and a way of life, you know? And you meet the best people in the, in the Ironman community, man. When you're standing on that beach in the morning and you're looking at 3,000 people who for the last six months of their life dedicated everything to being at that start. It's a lot of energy when those people are getting ready to get in that water. It's, it's something else. One minute. One minute to the start of the Blueprint for Athletes Ironman Boulder. Again, when you hear the cannon, walk down the ramp. And then when you hit the water, that's where you hit the gas. All right, athletes, are you guys ready? Make some noise. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Iron Man Boulder is mind is much more powerful than the body. If you put your mind to it, you'd be surprised. You know, people say that shit to me. Oh, I can't do an Iron Man. I'm like, motherfucker, don't say you can't do an Iron Man. You can do an Iron Man. If you fucking trained for it and applied yourself, you can finish an Iron Man. I see people 50 pounds overweight crossing that fucking finish line because they don't let anybody put the demons of doubt in their fucking head. And them hills at the end were fucking murder. It was like three huge climbs, man. But I just stayed on the bike, you know? That's it. I got a little altitude sickness, you know? Like just uh, nauseousness. So it is what it is. That's what I signed up for, so. Now it's just a nice little marathon. It's like, enjoy it. That's the main thing. Don't take it up to prove anything to anybody except yourself that you were able to do this, but you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy the process, you're not gonna stick with it. So I wasn't gonna quit. I just dealt with the pain, you know? And you're always gonna have pain, but you know what? You look around, man, and everybody else out on that course is going through what you're going through. From New York City, New York, John, well done. You are an Iron Man. Stephanie Lonerberg from Little Big Colorado, South Carolina. She's going to walk you all the way through. How you doing? Stephanie! Yeah, Stephanie! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan Kelly, you're going to have a beautiful medal. Ryan, thank you so much. Ryan, thank you so much. <laughs> Work through the pain. Uh, when 2016 hits, I'll probably do another two Ironmans before I hit Kona. So I got in Kona finally, and you know, train like hell, but I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> Do another lap, or are you good? <laughs> I want to do another Ironman. You do another one real quick. All right. It's just, I, I love it. I enjoy it. I'm not. A, I don't have this jock mentality that some of these people have that do these races. I don't ever want to be like that. I want to be competing in Ironmans when I'm 70. Yeah.